All right, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Uh, we are going to be painting very, very soon in this class in Maury's art room. And um, today, this video is going to be about painting setup and procedures. You can see the learning target right here. I can apply the information in this video to prepare myself for painting in Maury's art room. So um, I'm going to go through this list of things. And um, guys, it'll basically just make our painting time more efficient because setup and cleanup can take a long time if you don't know where things are, if you don't know procedures. But um, it can just take a matter of minutes. I mean, we've cleaned up in this classroom in two minutes' time, which is pretty amazing. Um, kind of feels like uh, something to brag about. Um, but you want to be familiar with these things. So, uh, hence, why we take the time to do that, and then it's really clear for everybody. So, the first thing that I want to mention is smocks, all right? Um, maybe you have a brand new outfit, or maybe you have this white shirt that you love, and paint does stain, okay? Some of it washes out of dark colors, but, um, I'll kind of walk around the room as we go and point things out. In this bin over by the um, shelves, we have a bunch of uh, garments that basically you're going to use as like an apron or a cover shirt. Um, some of them have buttons. Some of them are, are, are actually aprons. Some of them are old t-shirts. And that's the first thing to know. Uh, I'm not going to force you to wear these. So you're painting at your own risk, you know. So if you get paint on them, then go ahead and, you know, let the teacher know. Either me, Mrs. T, or a guest teacher that's in here. And you'll want to hang it up on this rack so it can dry out. Because you don't want to take, um, you don't want to take uh, a smock that has paint on it and throw it back in there for the next class to put it on. That's not good. So that's number one. Uh, the paint palettes... We basically use, um, we use these plastic palettes because they're reusable. And you can see the, these are pretty durable. Do not throw them away. You'll have your palette for the semester. And you can see here a number of students have crossed out or have put their, you know, their names on there. But then we've crossed them out and they've been used again and again. But like this one. Basically, put your name there. You can just do your first name if there's just one of you there. And then your period. So this was William from period seven. And that way, it'll get back to you. And you do that with Sharpie. You definitely do that with Sharpie. Now, um, guys, there's also lids that are going to go on the palettes. Um, you, will be, you will be getting these, um, you know, once we get started. One for each palette. And guys, the rule is the shiny side of the lid goes down, okay? Some of them have shiny on both sides, um, some of them don't, but you wanna make sure the shiny goes down. This keeps the paint from drying out as quickly, and so it saves paint, saves you time. You don't wanna spend half your time washing a palette. And, um, and it just, it really helps with organization. When you get it at your table and you take it off, okay? You just basically put it under your palette so it's out of the way. All right? It works really well. Uh, on that note, make sure binders are off the table, planners are off the table, so you just have painting space for your materials and whatnot. Now, um, guys, I'm going to mention right now in the video that what's going to happen at your tables is that each of you will get a job or you'll do a job. I usually first assign those jobs specifically to people at the table, and then as we do it more and more, you guys can just figure it out, all right? These things need to get done. I know you guys can do it, all right? Well, let's just say you have three people at a table, guys. You, there will be one person whose job is the palette person, um, the palette passer, I also call them. So, shiny side down, their job is to come up, see me or the teacher, Teacher will give them the palettes. They'll basically have to look at the name, go, oh, 
Alex, here's your pallet. Um, Jody, here's your pallet. Uh, a lot of times it'll be all at one table because I try to keep it organized like that. Um, at the end of the period, your job is really just to say, hey guys, I need pallets, put the lids on, give them to me. If you do this job right away, first thing, then everyone's done painting and it's cleanup time. I love painting, guys. I got my Bachelor of Fine Arts in painting and it's really hard for me to stop too, but if we don't stop when, you know, the, when either I or the teacher say so, you're gonna be late to your next class, um, your table's gonna be mad at you for not pulling your weight, you know, all that stuff. So um, stack them up like this. When you bring the pallets up to the shelf, you need to give it to the instructor. Don't put them on because Generally what happens is when students put them on, they just start to teeter, like the Tower of Pisa, and fall over and make a huge mess, and you don't want that. So um, give it to the teacher to put on the shelf, and we'll go from there. All right, paint. Now guys, there's many types of paint. Come this way, come this way. Um, we you know, have watercolor paint, which um, is really thin and translucent. Go ahead and spin around and look at the walls. That paint on the walls is acrylic paint. You can go look by the door. We did that this year. Students did this. Um, so acrylic paint is different than tempera paint. And tempera paint is what you guys are going to use mostly. Okay. Uh, think of it as temporary paint, even though it can stain. Um, it's just not as durable as acrylic paint, which is basically a plastic. And, and dries really hard. So uh, first off guys, with paint, if you're going to shake it, which is fine, put your finger on the cap and shake it. You don't want to <clears throat> all over the place. That's not going to be good for anybody. All right. Um, again, you want to be painting, not cleaning up paint. All right. So um, guys, tempera paint goes on really thick. Okay. Um, or it should go on really thick. Some of the colors are a little thin, so they might need two layers after they dry. But um, just be aware of this, because sometimes it takes, it's really hard to get out, and other times it just gushes, okay? Uh, come a little closer. So, ideally, well, let me introduce you to a paint caddy, okay? So you've met the paint, and the caddy is going to hold the paint. It's also going to hold the brushes. And it may even hold water cups. Okay, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But um, a lot of times we'll start out with just the primary colors. So we'll just start out with yellow, red, and blue. Um, and that's because we want to have you guys practice um, mixing secondary colors. Uh, green, orange, and violet. And then we will add the white and the black so we can get a range of tints and, um, and shades, okay? And maybe even um, some tones, some tones. So, um, guys, the paint caddy person is going to be responsible for bringing this to the table um, for your group and also making sure that, you know, you have enough paint. If you don't have enough paint in here, just basically, you're the one that's going to come up and talk to me and say, hey, we're out of white. Do you have any more white or whatever? And I'll make that happen. Also, you know, keep in mind, you want things to be clean during cleanup. Um, you know, brushes need to be cleaned out and need to be bristle side up. So if your brush person has done a horrible job cleaning, then you need to step up and say, hey, look at this. I think you can do a better job. In fact, I know you can, all right? Because we want to keep things organized. Um, usually, not all the time, but a lot of times, these will just stay on the table. And this is what I'll check, or Mrs. T will check, um, before we leave. Guys, easy test. Someone comes around, or you come around, just go like this. If there's paint on your hand, it's not um, clean enough, OK? So, end of the period, once the teacher says so, goes back up, up over here. All right, follow me. Um, 
water containers. Water containers will live here. Generally, guys, um, fill them halfway. You can fill them two-thirds the way, but what I tell students is if you're not sure what two-thirds is, then just do it halfway because one bump, this stuff just goes flying, especially if it's right on the edge. So at the end of the period, water cup people, you're going to come here, dump out the extra dirty water, rinse it, put it back over here. Okay. We have extra brushes here, so if brushes aren't in the paint caddies, come over and get these. Uh, these are beautiful. They are clean, they are bristle side up. Um, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. Ah, yes. Somebody did a great job. Okay. Uh, hey. I'm going to talk about, I guess, drying rack next. Um, so brushes, I have a different uh, video on cleaning brushes, so we'll do this later. Um, guys, at the end of the period when it's time to clean up, probably the second thing to do, um, third thing to do, is to get your wet paintings on a drying rack. So they're located over here. And for the most part, we've organized them by periods. Um, sometimes we share racks since we don't have quite enough, but you can see um, there's a few things to know. First off, when you put your artwork, your painting on the rack, definitely start from the bottom, go to the top. Why? Because if everybody puts it on the top, it gets really hard to, um, to basically see where you need to put you know, uh, your piece. Um, so you're just making it uh, easier for the next person and it just it speeds everything up so much. Okay? The other thing to know is that unless we're doing a big painting, these are going to want to fall through. So if we put it right there, there's only two points of contact. I'll do it in this one. And a lot of times, it does that. And then you're going to ruin the next person's piece, maybe even your piece. So this is what I suggest. Take your painting, you have one, two, three points of contact, have it stick off a little, just like that. Um, so you can see just the back edge is the only edge that's not supported. So you go up, 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 up. Um, you can do it on both sides for the most part, and that's super great. Uh, okay. So in case the battery on this dies, I'm going to say this. Um, tables need to get wiped down. I'm going to show that to you in just a second if we have time. Help your table out. If you're done with your job, look around and just figure out what you need to do. You might just need to remind your table mate to do their job. Okay, do it in a nice way, okay? Um, funny way, whatever you got to do. But like, let's just make it quick. And um, when you are done, sit down at your table. That way I know, hey, these guys are done, they're ready to roll, and um, I'll check it, and you're out of here. Okay, it goes so, so smooth. Now, if we have time, you will probably be using cloth towels to wipe your table. Now, um, you're wiping it for, you know, paint splatters. Rinse it, fold it, fold it, fold it, twist it, and then grab it on the end, wring it out. If you use warm water, it'll dry much faster. You pretty much just don't want it to be dripping wet as you go around the room. Come to the table, wipe it down like this. All right, flip it maybe, just so you can have a clean side for whatever area. Bring it back. Rinse it, real good, better than that. Fold it, fold it, fold it, grab it on the end, start twisting. And here is the scoop, guys. You practice this seven times, you'll never go back. You'll be like, I hate soggy towels. When you put it on the edge of the rack, it's not dripping. It's not making a puddle where someone's going to whoop, slip and fall, and that's going to make it. Well, it's going to make this a much better place to live, okay? Mm, 
Anything else that I want to say? I know it's a lot of information. It'll become real familiar real, real fast. The ringing part, I know it's wet, it's cold. You're like, I don't want to touch it. But just do it and you'll get used to it. And then you'll realize throughout your life, you'll also be annoyed when you go to pick up a sponge and somebody hasn't done that. You'll be like, oh, you know. But this will be good and make things run well. Okay, that's all I got. Thanks. Let's paint.